Well, what's going on today guys? Welcome back to another video. Today I have something super exciting that I have been wanting to do uh, ever since I found out that the Canadian and Korean and even I think European um, Elantra GTs or i30s have had this part. Yes, that is right. By the title of the video, we are going to be installing red seat belts on the US spec Elantra GT N line. So before I start this video, I want to say that I put in quite a lot of time researching and um, making sure that these will work in this car, and I guess today we will find out if that is the case. Um, but it takes a little bit of old Hyundai knowledge to know how their part numbers work uh, between regions of the world. And these are actually Korean red seat belts and not the Canadian ones, which I bet the Canadian ones will work in these cars. Um, but those are a lot more expensive. So yes, let's go ahead and unbox the Korean uh, red seat belts for this car and we'll take a look at how to install them in a second. So here we are, we have the lovely Korean box of parts here. And as you can see, we have the parts. Now, if you're wondering why there's only three boxes here, that's probably because I have already had the um, passenger side one installed for a couple weeks now and I got that from a different supplier. That took over a month to get in, so I would definitely not recommend using that supplier as he shipped it uh, via the postal service and they are just incredibly slow right now. But got this package via FedEx and we have the rest of the seat belts. Of course we have, this one is the front and the two larger ones are the back. Now these include all the tensioners and everything, not the pre-tensioners in the bottom of the belt. Um, this is just a locking mechanism in the side. So here's the front, like I said, this includes everything. This is the regular uh, retractor and um, the one part of the seatbelt explosive that locks it in place when you're in an accident. And here is the back. Now again, I have not installed a rear one yet, so I'm not 100% sure if these will work, but I'm 99% sure they will. Uh, the rear ones again have a bolt on the bottom to secure the bottom of them since they don't have a pre-tensioner built in. Um, but yeah, here is the back and as you can see they're both nice red ones. And let's not waste your time and go ahead and install these belts on the car. Now when doing anything with the electrical or um, airbag system in this car, obviously you want to disconnect the battery. So that will be the first step in this process. Now one thing to note before you go ahead and disconnect the battery and you're doing the back install is you might want to open the rear hatch since that is an electronic uh, actuation. You might just want to open it up uh, before you go ahead and get started on this process. But otherwise, if you guys are just doing the front, there is no need to open the hatch. Um, the fronts are honestly only take about 20 to 30 minutes each side. So um, let's go ahead and disconnect the battery now that the rear hatch is open. And uh, I think we're going to go ahead and start with the driver's side front, just so I can show you guys how to do a front. And then we'll go ahead on and investigate the rear seat belts. So to do this install, you'll need to remove the front and rear rubber door seals, this bottom big piece of plastic. You'll need to unclip uh, this just in the front half, because um, then you'll slide it out from here. And you also need to remove this top piece here, which uh, both of them just clip in, so it's super easy. And this pre-tensioner, what I was referring to earlier, this is the main reason why you cannot use any of the European or Australian seat belts in this car uh, because this is an extra level of safety that those cars do not have. They just bolt in down here rather than clipping into another um, tensioner. So um, that is why we are limited to the Korean or the Canadian seat belts. Uh, another thing to note, I guess, if you guys have the power seats um, or the power driver seat anyway, you'll want to remove that all the way forward. Uh, before you disconnect the battery because um, you know obviously you can't move a power seat without power so uh, go ahead and move that seat forward before disconnecting the battery. Okay, so as you guys just saw, I ended up did breaking one of the top clips and one of the bottom ones is missing. 
which means it's still down there so I'll have to try to get that out somehow um, the other side they all came out super easy um, but I do have extra blue clips on uh, some spare plastic trim that I got from the hatch um, down my storage unit so I might have to run and get a couple of those spare clips uh, but anyways this is just super um, tough to get off like those OEM clips are but moving around back here once you guys have that trim off once again it just slips underneath here and underneath the front one and then you just remove it and it all comes out here uh, the top again is just clipped on um, with several of those clips you can see them right there two down here and I think there's like two or three more up here uh, but you just want to unclip this as well and it will separate from this um, slider portion here and overall it's super easy and to remove the belt you have one main I think this is 14 millimeter bolt down here you have another smaller one up here which I think I think that's a 10 and then you have one I think 14 millimeter up top as well and that's all there is to it there's three bolts holding this in minus the connector there and uh, that's about it So yeah, well, like I said, there's just two clips on the bottom and then it clips into the headliner up top. So uh, just keep that in mind when you're going through the install process. But again, this kind of just needs to hang there until you get all the uh, belt loose or at least until you get the bottom part unclipped, which you can just do with a flathead screwdriver. You just insert it into the hole on the side and this pulls right out. So uh, let me go ahead and do that really quick. Get the tools for the uh, bigger bolts and we'll go ahead and remove the OEM seat belt. And to instill some confidence in you guys, um, here are the seat belts side by side. I have just this wedge in here to keep from going all the way down. I'm not sure if that's bad or not, if it does. Um, but anyways, here is the red one. Here is the other one. As you can see, they pretty much look identical. I mean, even the color of the plug is the exact same. Uh, overall, I think this is literally just a plug and play swap. And again, the reason for the Korean or Canada ones is this clip right here, which clips down into the pretensioner, just like that. Um, even the button to keep the seat belt from going all the way down. Let me see if I can find it here, right there. It's all the same. So uh, the passenger side one even has a loop right here to keep the belt, um, the buckle from going down. Uh, that one has a loop on the red one. So they are literally all the same that I could tell you from so far other than this thing right here it says meets the I assume this is like a federal law for seat belts and automobiles this one says uh, the Korean version of that but I mean all the stitching everything is the same between the belts so um, I think you guys uh, should have some confidence that these are exactly plug-and-play um, belts for the uh, Elantra GTs and one last thing to note before you go ahead and install the new seat belt if you happen to break any of these blue clips make sure to dig it out of the bottom there mine fell down there from that one clip and i'm sure it would make some rattling noises so make sure you guys double check um, underneath there when the old seat bow is removed just a quick note do not try to over tighten the top bolt that maintains it in that little groove or slot uh, the one right here up top um, just because it seems like these are very weak hardware. Um, I didn't have any problem on that side. Okay, so I got the trim all buttoned back up. Um, I will be replacing that broken bolt eventually. I have the two pieces here I can use for a reference to get a new one. Um, but And I also have well, one of those broken clips that I said I need to replace. So I just made sure that this was the clip that was broken. It's held in down here by this trim piece, kind of snapped together. So 
Um, there shouldn't be any extra noises or anything that the clip's broken um, on that plastic trim, but I will need to replace that bolt as well. So um, there's just some extra work that may be involved if something like this happens to you. Uh, but overall, it looks great. Now that I have both of the front ones done, so now that we got the front all buttoned up, let's go see what the back will take to get these belts out. Um, another option for him in doing this is just to do the front as well. Um, I think that looks perfectly fine. You know, I'm not sure cars that have colored seat belts from the factory that have more than uh, two front seats if they do the back as well. Um, obviously, in Canada and other places, the end lines uh, get four uh, colored seat belts and the middle one is still black. Uh, the 2018 Elantra GT Sport in Canada actually had all five as colored. Um, so it had this middle one color as well in the back seat. Uh, but it's really up to you guys uh, how many you guys want to do. If you guys just want to do the front or do all four. Um, I think the price is really good either way. So um, yeah, let's go ahead and see what the uh, back takes to get them out. So I just went ahead and removed this plastic trim piece, which is literally just two bolts on either side under those plastic covers. And it revealed exactly what I was hoping for. Uh, the thing right there, it looks like we will have to remove this upper plastic piece because the bolts are literally like straight underneath there. So you guys can probably see them right there. So it looks like we will have to remove two pieces of trim, but maybe we'll just need to peel this one back. It looks like it's just on clips, as you can see one right there. So that shouldn't be too bad. Uh, hopefully it comes off without any issues. And we can just go ahead and uh, remove those two bolts and get that one out of here. As far as the bottom of the belts go, uh, looks like we will have to get underneath the seat at least a little bit, which may or may not be an issue. Well, that was not easy, but I got it. All right, to show you guys what is going on here, um, it's a bit of a pain, but essentially I got these uh, three clips, one here, one right up there, and one a little farther back that you guys can't see, unclipped. Uh, this one might be prone to breaking. I am gluing mine back together, so hopefully it holds up. But essentially it just holds that in there. Um, but the bolt holes, you guys can kind of see back there. Uh, right there and right there. They're just barely underneath the line where this top piece sits. So you do have to access it from behind. Um, I would recommend breaking the bolts loose with a 3 8 inch ratchet and a low profile 14 millimeter socket if you guys have it a normal one will work and then after you guys have broken them loose and started loosening them up I'd recommend switching to a quarter inch ratchet with a 14 millimeter socket on it because that gives you more clearance against this plastic because as you're backing the bolts out it gets tighter and tighter against this plastic so I'd recommend keeping as minimum size in there as possible there's no way you're even going to fit a uh, half inch socket or half inch ratchet and socket back in there. So keep that in mind that clearance is an issue and that's what I would recommend. Once you get them out, the bolts will not come out of the um, thing here because they have these washers on the back. The new seat belts come with all new bolts and hardware. So um, everything like that is fine. Just keep in mind you have to pull these far enough out to get them out of the holes. So I'd recommend prying these back all the way around once you guys have them loosened all the way out of the threads and pull them back so you guys can back these out because the way this is designed this sits in there like this so you kind of have to pull over and then out to get it to come all the way out and then once you guys have that out you can bend this carpet down and pull it out there as far as underneath the seat I still have no idea how the seat is fastened there must be bolts along the back or something because this thing is fixed in place other than the front side um, but anyways, under there, you'll find this bolt, another 14 millimeter bolt with the seat belt on it. So just need to loosen that up. Again, it will not come out all the way, but I would recommend it breaking it loose again with a 3 8 inch ratchet and socket, and then switching to a quarter inch with a 14 millimeter socket on it, just for clearance issues. And once it's all the way loose, you can go ahead and slide it out from underneath the back of the seat here and everything is done okay so here is an interesting discovery about the rear seat belts um, from korea in the united states um, you can see ours here does not have any sort of airbag uh, pretensioner or tension system in it and the korean belts do 
so you can see here has a plug and everything like that uh, the whole assembly is a little bigger as well uh, it has some padding right here I assume to go against the body because it might make contact or very close um, but overall the um, bolt holes and everything look the same um, but yeah everything else looks the same here here is the bottom bolt again I think everything is the same as far as that goes so that is very interesting though um, that the rear seat belt over there do have that um, system in it just like our front um, so I guess I'll go ahead and make sure everything looks and acts the same as far as the, the locking mechanism and everything like that um, if it does I think I'm gonna go ahead and throw it in anyway uh, just not plug it in obviously um, but yeah I'll go ahead and let, update you guys in a second all right so I finally got this side done as you guys can see I just have to button up the plastics and everything back there but I think everything works out and again is identical to uh, the stock black seat belts over there in terms of stitching um, the little um, buckle stopper when the seat belts up um, everything like that is the same and I believe it's the only and I believe the only difference is, is that one has the um, airbag connector on it so it probably locks up permanently um, when the airbags go off whereas the stock ones do not so um, since that's not connected that's not going to be an issue uh, but yeah everything went smoothly again I just have to button up everything back there and I think this side's done the back was definitely much harder than the fronts to do uh, so if you guys plan on doing this yourself um, fronts take maybe maybe 30 minutes each side if that uh, the backs um, I would probably budget 45 to an hour for each side um, just because everything's so tight um, and if you guys take out this plastic piece, it'd probably make it a lot easier, but I'm not willing to do that Because there's another one of those stupid clips up here, and I don't want to break anything. So Yeah, I think everything is good to go on this side And here I just want to show you guys everything how it fits the metal brace on the This red one is a lot bigger than the other one and you can see in the back there You can kind of see it that rubber or foam pad hitting against the body that's exactly that I suspected um, to keep it from vibrating or anything like that. Uh, you guys can kind of see it back there, way in the back. Um, but yeah, this side is definitely a lot bigger. Everything is fit perfectly in terms of the carpet and everything. It is pretty close up here. If you were to push on it, you can feel it. But otherwise, it is perfect. Everything fits just like I thought back there. So uh, yeah, pretty happy with this fitment. All right, so now I am back after a shower and a little bit of rest to show you guys the final results of the red seat belts on the Elantra GT. Now I have to say the rear seat belts were much harder than it looked at first glance. Um, each side just took a little bit of work. The bolts were in a really odd spot along that lower plastic piece, and even if you bent it out of the way, um, really you need to remove it altogether. But it is connected. Uh, with another trim piece that takes a lot of work to remove so overall it is doable the way i did it kind of just moving it out of the way and then accessing the bolts uh, in that tight area with the smallest socket possible but overall the back is just a lot harder than the front so keep that in mind if you guys are going to do this swap in your car so take a look on the interior as you can see the red seat belts totally pop uh, compared to the old black ones it's nice to see such a premium looking belt inside the cabin definitely gives it a whole different vibe matches the red accents very well in the back of course that middle one is still black but overall the two outside red ones look amazing of course you don't have to give your rear passengers the same treatment as the front if you don't want to um, all of the seat belts pretty much cost the exact same, so um, that is definitely an uh, optional feature, especially given how hard it was to install. But either way, they look really good on the interior here. So let me know what you guys think of the red seat belts in the end line. Of course, if you are from Canada or overseas, you probably already know what it's like to have colored seat belts in your car. Uh, so still, let me know what your thoughts are on the red seat belts. 
I was thinking the other day, I'm like, I wonder what the cheapest car to come from factory with colored seat belts. The Elantra GT uh, N-Line and Sport up in Canada have to be near the number one spot because, you know, I don't, I can't think of any other make or model that comes with colored seat belts outside of most sports cars and uh, luxury performance cars these days. So, uh, if you guys have the answer to that, let me know. Or if you can think of one that's cheaper uh, than the Elantra GT N-Line, let me know because I am very curious about that myself. Uh, but anyways, without being said, I hope you guys enjoy this video once again. Leave a comment down below. Hit that like button. It definitely helps me out. Um, stay tuned for the next mod video because I'm sure you got a teaser of it already in this video. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.